Welcome back to the news at 10 on Channel's television. Kaduna said Governor Nasir al rafai says that his administration has concluded plans to immediately create over 3,000 jobs for the team in unemployed youths in the state. Mr. al rafai says that he is concerned over the high rate of unemployment in the state. He reiterated his commitment to fulfill all his campaign promises. The new administration in Kaduna State says empowering the youth is at the top of its agenda. Here in this room, representatives of labor unions, market associations and other professional bodies are... The new administration in Kaduna State says empowering the youth is at the top of its agenda. Here in this room, representatives of labor unions, market associations and other professional bodies are present as Governor Nasser El Rufai unveils measures aimed at reducing unemployment. The Nigerian Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress are in support of weeding out ghost workers, but also ask the authorities here to take housing for civil servants more seriously. We expect the government to look into the possibility of furnishing those that were directly involved in this issue of ghost workers. Because as labor leaders, we are not, we are not happy whenever we meet the government, the government will tell us that we have, we have a lot of ghost workers in our payroll. In as much as we are agreeing and we are partnering with government to ensure that ghost workers are flushed out, government should also make it a point to, to discuss with the banks that are handling this verification exercise to employ more hands so that our civil servants are not unnecessarily put into hardship. Creating jobs on one hand and rumors of downsizing on the other, the state government is quick to defend the ongoing verification exercise for civil servants in the state. We have no goals uh, for the verification beyond establishing how many ghost workers we have. We want to eliminate ghost workers. We haven't taken a decision what to do once we uh, eliminate that. We are going to restructure the government. Uh, there will be mergers of ministries, as you know, and uh, we'll look at that uh, when, we are, when we are there. But for now, we just want to eliminate ghost workers and reduce the size of our payroll because we believe there is a lot of fraud built in our payroll. At the end of this town hall meeting, it is expected that the government will keep to its promises. The Delta State Governor, Ifan Yokoa, has announced plans for a bailout for the state from its current debt profile of 636 billion naira. While addressing the Delta State Assembly in Asaba, Governor Okoa said that it is important to put the State Assembly in the know of the financial status. Governor Okoa also revealed the shortfall of about 12 billion naira in the May 2015 federal allocation released to Delta State. The highlight of that briefing is that the revenue receipts from Federal Accounts and Location Committee FAC has dipped significantly, dropping to just 8.03 billion in April as received in May 2015, from a high of over 20 billion in previous years. Currently, the state is grappling with a revenue bond and indebtedness commercial banks totaling 98.62 billion in principal sum. While outstanding contractual obligations is 538 billion, 601 million, 962,421.5 euros. Parents of students of King's College in Lagos are protesting the unhygienic condition of the school while also accusing the school authorities of denying them access to visit the awards on the assigned visiting day. The parents are aggrieved with the living conditions of the school hostel, which includes the toilets, the hostel rooms, the health center, non-functional generating set, non-portable water, among other issues. They say that all efforts to meet with the school authorities through the Parents Teachers Association of the school has failed. Efforts by Channel's television's crew to reach the principal on the phone and also to gain access to the premises of the school was futile. The children are suffering and we the parents have brought the situation in the school.
to the attention of the school. But instead of having, for instance, if you go to the clinic, you don't see sterilizers. It had to take the, um, one of the parents to buy uh, an autoclave and give to the school. This is the only thing now that I use it to sterilize the products. And that the generator in the clinic, because some children fall sick in the night, and then there is, because there is no light there, you know, they force them to go back to the hostel. So anything can happen there. So what we are here for, and what we have been agitating for, is good living environment for the children. We, this is King's College, and this is not the King's College that we know before. We want the, 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 the quality or the standard of living of the children, of our children, to, 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 to be enhanced by the authorities of the school. Students suffer a lot from bed bug, bed bug bites, and there is no water running in that school. You can go and investigate. The environment is so dirty, it's so filthy. Children fall sick almost on, on, on a very regular basis. This is what the children used to fetch water in school in a place like this, Victoria Island. Oh, I'm, I'm correct, here is Victoria Island. It shouldn't be so. There's no good water for them in this school. They drink colored water. So what they, the school now did is that they produce their own King's College water that the children buy. Table water for 450, pure water for 100 naira. And the water is King's College water. It is customized. If you, if you bring in your own water here, they will refuse. The toilets in this school, my brother, you will never allow your son to use the toilet here. The toilet is in a bad shape. All the hostels, very, very dirty. The hostel is overcrowded with children. And we are paying for everything. They are not giving these children the best that they can give, as in what children deserve. And these are little children. I, I will tell you that my son is just 10 years old. Others, the JS, it's JS 1, 1 to 3 that are here. The Nigerian Brewers PLC, in partnership with renowned young African novelist Chimamanda Adichie, has selected 25 participants as writers chosen to tell the, the true African story. At the 2015 Literary Evening organized by the Nigerian Brewers PLC and Chimamanda Adichie, the selected participants were presented with certificates having completed the monitoring workshop. The organizers say that the event was to encourage creative writing, building of libraries, and to make a space for aspiring writers who want to make a difference in their writing career. Quite a stimulating evening for young aspiring writers in Nigeria's literary world. It's the seventh year running for the Nigerian Breweries PLC and its long-standing commitment with Nigeria's renowned writer Chimamanda Adichie in discovering writing stars for the future. The century isn't just a talent hunt, but a search for passion and character to tell African stories. After an intense monitoring workshop, 25 selected candidates who displayed exemplary writing spirit are selected and presented their certificates. But what difference does Chimamanda Adichie intend to bring to Nigeria's literary world? My dream for this workshop is really just to encourage um, talented writers from not just Nigeria but really Africa. And this year has been particularly very good. The participants are so talented and I think that my role as a workshop leader is simply to give them validation, to encourage them, to say go and do what you can do and do it as well as you can. And I'm very hopeful about this generation of writers who are coming up. It might be quite tasking to spot the common interest between what the Nigerian Breweries PLC stands for and promoting literary works of African minds. This is what the managing director of the Nigerian Breweries PLC has to say. Nigerian Breweries um, wants to uh, have interventions where we can um, um, sort of um, um, develop uh, Nigerian talent and this uh, creative writers workshop which we do with uh, Chimamanda Adichie is a, is a wonderful platform to uh, first um, um, 
search for Nigerian talent and then with this workshop develop them and help them to become uh, better writers, uh, more creative writers. This initiative might just strike the balance between work and leisure as Nigerian breweries continues to mentor young aspiring African writers. Safeguarding the heritage site located in different parts of Ethiopia, not only showcasing them, has become a big deal for the government there. The challenge is that most of these treasures are hidden in the rural communities which lack the bare necessities of life. Our correspondent Melinda Akinlami visited some of these sites in Ethiopia and now reports. As one of the early civilizations on the African continent, Life is simple for the people of Ethiopia, although they pride themselves silently as a country with many firsts. All the stelas are like grave markers erected above the tomb, because all, every stelas we have a symbol. At the bottom of the stela we have symbol of door. Above the door we have stories. That is, we call it the skyscraper building. It comes out tops when talking about World Heritage Sites in Africa. A handful in the cities, a chunk tucked away in the rural areas, like the rock-hewn churches in Lalibela, the mosque in Nagash, built in the 7th century, currently being given a facelift. Queen of Sheba's palace, or what's left of it, which has been excavated several times to be sure it's the real deal. The Stella Park in Axum, where Blue Blood sleeps, is a major attraction for tourists, and there are many others where that came from. But these treasures hidden here are a sharp contrast. When you look at the life of the people, it's anything but rosy. The whole Africa has been not really promoted uh, by us, especially intercontinent tourism. Africa to Africans have never been priority for all of us. So we are, we are really facing uh, a problem because many people come from all over the world, but not us. It's a process that we have never started. So soon we started it already, so it will continue to grow. Get it. A 33-year-old potter and a mother of five also shares that passion. She lives in Yeha, where a 5th century temple is still standing tall. She loves the attraction it brings. It's an opportunity to sell her wares. I'm a potter, she says. I learned this skill from the Potter's Women's Association in Axum. We are trained to use this art to empower ourselves so we won't have to depend on our husbands. Thanks to the temple, the community can boast of a school, water and transport, but that's just scratching the surface. Heritage sites such as this one dock the nukes and crannies of Ethiopia and that's why a lot of tourists come here every year just to feast their eyes on interesting finds like this. It has brought the people fame but not so much fortune but they feel that everything good will come. For them this is much more than any gold. From Axum in Ethiopia, I'm Melinda Kilami reporting for Channels Television News. Next on the news at 10, 20 goals scored in the 14th week of the Nigeria Premier League. Join us again.